Hey guys, hope you're well. Stuart Tomlinson, Warrior Collective. We're back with our only our second ever uh, live stream. Uh, now, if you've been seeing the the images we put out, you'll know who I'm joined by, and hopefully you know who they are. Uh, the phenomenal Damien Trainer and Jamie Goulding. Now, obviously very stylistically different. We're kind of talking Muay Thai, Karate, but hopefully what we're going to go through today is showing how uh, they can bounce off each other, how you can take aspects of striking from one system and use it just as easy as another. Uh, now, I'm, we're not going to waste any time, we get straight into it, so I'm going to pass it over to Jamie. Uh, and Jamie, what's the, the first thing that we're going through today for you? The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to recap uh, a technique that I did quite a long time ago, okay, it's the hook kick. Uh, we're going to start it off from the rear leg, okay, so this hook kick is going to work from a fake initially, which is going to take us into the technique. Alright, well, I'll leave you to it, guys, go. Alright, okay. Oh, so, okay, so um, first of all, thank you, Damien, for helping me out today, okay? Um, what we're going to do with this kick, okay? This kick I'm going to do with my right leg. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to aim low with my first kick, okay? As, as, as though it's like a leg kick, you know, a uh, Thai boxing or a shin kick or whatever, okay? But what I'm going to do, I'm not actually going to make any contact with the kick. The first part of the technique is a complete fake. What I'm trying to do, okay, is get all the retention across to this side because they think something big's coming, all right? And I'm actually going to attack the opposite top quarter, all right? So, I'll just do it briefly so they don't get asked too much, okay? So what I'll do, okay, as I come through, I'll make sure that I don't make any contact. I'll swing my knee right the way through, bam, and come on the opposite side of the head with the hoop kick, okay? Now, I've got foot pads on, so you can't really see what I hit with them. The part of the foot that I hit with them, okay, was the flat of the foot. You can hit with the heel, okay? If I was doing more of full contact, um, I'd hit with a heel every time. If it was more sport, kickboxing or sports points fighting, then I would hit with the flat of the foot because it gives me a little bit of extra range. I don't have to be as close to the guy and risk getting hit, all right? Just so you know the foot positioning on it. So watch again. So I'll swing right the way through, okay, which helps me chamber my leg to allow me to get that hook kick. So it'll come through, bosh, this way, coming on the total opposite side, okay? Now, Another thing that I like to do on this is I'll do it straight off so it looks big, okay? So they can be getting ready to counter, they can, might be loading up for that shot, and as that shot gets halfway out, that's when the heel comes through and catches them, okay? Now, so when I come through as well, as I get the hip all the way through, if I was to make contact with Damien's leg, it would stop all my momentum, and that would, it, it would ruin the kick. Because if I was to catch his check, boom, now I can't, I've got to re- I've got to rebuild up the energy and get it through. So I don't extend my leg out at all. I keep my knee tight in chamber. So it completely bypasses the leg. Okay, so I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, so I completely bypass the leg. One, bam, and come around that opposite side this way. Okay, now there, I'm pulling the kick uh, just so I can touch Damien's glove. Okay, obviously I don't want to take a liberty. Okay, but what I do, I go right through with the kick normally and try and do as much damage as possible. Okay, now that is. Working from the left, okay? Now, in different systems, we have different rule sets, okay? So, uh, in other systems, we're only allowed to hit above the waist, all right? So this next one is gonna run the exact same way. What I wanna do, I wanna throw my kick round towards the waist or the back, all right? The principle is completely the same. As I come round, I'm making it big, and I come right the way through, and round on the opposite side again, okay? So watch again. I'll come through, one, bam, round on that side. Now, for you guys who are flexible, say, for example, you used to throw this kick and it didn't have the desired effect. So it might have, they might have actually, you know, covered it like a bit of fluke block on it or whatever, and it's not done much. Because your chamber is so high, your knee's so high, that means, okay, it allows me to stamp down if need be. So what I mean by that is, when I come through, here, if it's not going to die, I can stamp into him with his kick, or I can push off and get range again. Okay? So it's also a good, you know, safety mechanism there for you in case it's not had the desired effect that you wanted from it. Okay? So we'll do that one more time. So from here, I'm going for the waist this time. I'm going to completely bypass and come the opposite side. So I'll come through one, bam, bam, opposite side this side. Okay? And that is the fake into the hoop kick, guys. Okay? Okay, guys, so um, what I forgot to mention actually was drop any comments that you might want to ask, any questions. Uh, what, what, one of the things I wanted to get from today was 
if you had any particular questions that you wanted to throw at Damien and Jamie because of their different backgrounds, now is a fantastic opportunity to do that. So if you have any questions, uh, whether it's aimed at Damien purely for Muay Thai or aimed at Jamie purely for Karate, or stylistically how one affects the other uh, and vice versa, don't be afraid to, to use that. Um, so one of the one of the questions that we've had, and, and, and this will be for, for you, Jamie, is if, for example, Damien was to fire a low kick, how would you defend it from a karate background? Just a standard low kick for getting the hook kick. Yeah, right. So basically, my sport, my sport, uh, kickboxing sport, karate stance, okay, is a sideways stance. I'll just show you it towards the camera, okay, so you can see. This is the stance okay, that, that we work from, okay. We don't all work from this stance. Some of us fight, you know, square on as well. But predominantly, we fight them from, from this stance, just for manoeuvrability. And like, uh, like rightly so, whoever asked the question, okay, we are susceptible to calf uh, kicks and leg kicks from the back. Okay, we are quite susceptible to it. So my, one, of, one of my defences for this, okay, is I'll purposely give them the leg. Okay, I'll give them the leg so that they do try to destroy it. This is going now from physical attacks. I'm trying to get into his head mentally. So what I'll do, I'll try and make him miss the leg so that he feels inferior. So then he's less apt to throw that kick at me anymore, okay? One way that I'll do it, okay, is just a quick switch. So as, um, uh, so he, go for my calf if you want, that's my one. As he comes, I switch, okay? And then that's when I'll either unload in, okay, or I'll throw my own kick to his leg and I'll break off, okay? So just a simple switch, okay? So I'm sideways on, I just come in, walk back, and then I've made the attack back. I normally I go with hands because of the distance, okay? If if they are to if they are to rush me, so if if they're coming up for a big kick where they're gonna try and chop me in half, what I'll do, I'll push off my front foot and I'll line break. So as soon as I see Damien come in, I'll push off this way, okay, and I'll break the line. I'm gonna move, I don't wanna get hit with that. So I'll move right off, okay? And I don't know if it's showed on camera then. Uh, what I did as well, as I moved, okay, I put my hand out and just stumped him so that if, if he landed and he tried to throw the over hand, okay, I've stumped him there, so just so it's a little bit of a safety mechanism for me, okay? So there's two. So the first one, all I do, I just switch my stance back arm and then I can unload, okay? My second one, I push off my front foot. That's really, really important. If you push off your back foot, the leg will stay there and you'll smash it, okay? So I've got to make sure that I push off that front foot and my back foot is my capture. As a line break off away from that power, that's when I'll shoot the leg, but, uh, sorry, shoot the hand and just stump him as well, just so I can control that distance, all right? Because obviously, I don't want to get into a leg kick ball with a top tie boxer. So I'll try and use my range and make him miss, make him not feel confident about it anymore. So then I'm attacking it mentally. That's how I deal with And uh, another message that we kind of got given then as well, and this one's for Damien. Um, so Damien, you obviously coach a lot of MMA fighters, high level striking. Um, and in MMA, they're going to come across lots of different styles of fighters. In Muay Thai, obviously, you do find different types of fighters, but it's definitely more prevalent in MMA. If you had, a, if you had one of your fighters facing uh, an MMA fighter who had a style like Jamie's, how would you start to prepare them for for dealing with some of the things that you've just seen? Um, a lot of it is it's more about trying to find your range, where, for instance, if I try and rush in, that's giving me that time to be able to shoot off from there. Right? So as I'm coming through, I'm going to kind of go through just like small touches, sort of testing out, so I can kind of land my techniques from there. So the main thing is to kind of like find out, like, if shots out, I'm not trying to make contact yet, so then I can kind of use it to be able to land in from there. And obviously then when I know I can start landing, then it'd be something big, okay, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of it really, I need to see how they're moving before, because if I just kind of rush in, that's obviously what they kind of want, and that's where you can kind of shoot off from me, and obviously then just bring that leg back. So it's going to be small touches first, and obviously then for when you're ready, I'm just tapping through, put my throat through into the body, and when I'm ready, then I can chop down into the leg. But a lot of it's kind of seeing like the bigger picture rather than just one thing. So... If we were to do, uh, sorry, if we were to do uh, s sparring, obviously Jamie moves very differently to you, um, and given how this legs out in front and that that fast pace movement, would the low kick be one of your main weapons for breaking that down? If you were fighting or if you were coaching a fighter to fight the style, 
I'd have to kind of see, like, me personally looking at it, I'd probably, like I said, fire a kick, not that much behind it to see what the reaction is. If it lands, then I'd kick again. If he kind of does, like, he's springing off, to say, because he's quite side on. So, if you get yeah. to, so obviously, for me now, it's quite open here after this kick. So, I'd probably fire more left body kicks. Because if he tries to come into springing punches as well, so he's going to come straight in. But I'd test it first. If I, if he moves his leg back like he practice, and he comes in with something, I'd probably not do that. For me to kind of punch then, uh, kick, sorry, I'd probably fire some shots in first to hide the kick rather than going straight through. But if he's very good at like moving off or bringing that leg back after I'm kicking, I'd probably just fire a lot of left body kicks because that's going to stop him pressing onto me as well. Because generally, most, not all, but most people are right-handed, which means they're more open on this side of the body for like the left kick or the left knee. Okay. Also, if he sticks his right arm out, to the his arm out, if I go right kick, I kind of almost naturally fall into this punch. Where if I go left kick, I naturally move away, so it's safer for me. So if I've got someone who keeps exploding with big hands, left kick's going to stop him quite easily in that aspect, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, and uh, guys, these are the questions that you should be asking. Um, it's really interesting to hear Damien and Jamie at the same time and bouncing off each other because straight away we're looking at how one attacks, how it defends, and just like Damien just said, sometimes you have to see how that person's going to move in front of you before you formulate a game plan. You formulate a game plan uh, before the fight, but also during it, given how they move. Um, so let's move on to the, the next one. So what are you covering now, Damien? Well, obviously, I'm quite known for the body punch, so I'm going to kind of go over some ways of setting up the body punch. Um, one of the first things is, uh, for myself, where when I'm in my stance, I can't really step in too close there to land a shot in, especially for Muay Thai, because if I'm kind of here, I can get elbowed in the face quite easily, I can get kneed, and obviously he can grab me at the same time. Where for me, so this is my fighting distance, but I can strike quite easily, and I'm back where I am. What that does is from bending from my midsection here, so as I'm in position, Right shoulder turns in, but it leans towards, right? So I've kind of travelled this distance. My head's off the centre line at the same time. So I drop in. Right now, when you fire the body punch, you're not aiming directly at the side. It's sliding to the front, roughly on the side where your abs would be. So I want to come in from this way, and I'm firing into the body from there. And see, I'm still at a safe distance. So when I fired it, I'm back. I'm back here. So I can carry on attacking, or I can step off if I need to. Right, so again... Shoulder turns in, my weight's on that lead leg, and I fire that punch into the lead back. Right now, a simple way that I've used quite often is if I go left hook, I'm going to get James to block that hook. Well, he's got the hook, I've opened him straight away for the body. So I can either fire like a power hook and a power body punch, but generally I'll kind of slap here. So I'll slap, boom, and then I'll hit to the body quite hard from there. Right now, if it lands flush, Obviously, you might put him down. But generally, if you've ever kind of uh, competed or been hit yourself, it's an accumulation. Normally, it puts people away. So after a bit, he's took a good body shot. He's took another one. It's going to start taking the wind out of him. So a simple one again. So I'll go left up. So the person might say, I will reload. It's so not just my arm. Because if I go hook and James starts firing back straight at me, obviously, I can get caught quite easy. So I want to fire the hook. I so I'll reload. So my weight's gone to me. My head's covered. Jamie does start hitting me, I'm quite in a solid position, so I'm not going to lose my base. And I'll drive up, and I'll say again, I'm going to hit into the body from there. Okay, I'll just show you quickly from this angle. So again, so my shoulder turns in, so I'll bend towards. I'm not just turning away, because again, if Jamie hits me now, it's easy for me to lose position from that base. So I'll turn in, if I get hit now, I'm quite solid. My weight's on my lead leg, I'm going to drive off the floor. And as I drive up, I'm going to punch into the body. Right now, some people, punch round, if that's okay, but for me, I want to come up, I aim for the opposite shoulder, so I'm aiming to come in this way, and what that does as well, one, I can get more power, because I'm driving up, and with me being short, I've got a lot of leverage in my legs, also, if I miss the body, there's a high chance, I can catch him, something else as I'm coming through, so it gives me just like a chance, if I do miss, I can get the head, well, what we'll do, I'll go over like um, another way, that it can land the body punch, if Jamie throws a left body kick, so I'm coming, I'm going to catch the kick from here. Once the first bit, I took my arm down and cover my head at the same time. My hands are going to come underneath, I'm going to grip around onto the leg. And again, so we go left body kick. So I catch it round, I catch it near the ankle. And I'm going to stay where I am, I'm going to kind of take my hips out and turn it through. And if you look, 
I drag Jamie's leg past my body. I don't want to leave it here because if he kicks my arm, he can get off me and obviously he's away. So I need to pull it past my body so he can't get away from me. So again, so he goes left kick. So I catch, so I drag it through so he can't get away. And what I do now, so my shoulder comes in, I'm going to fire it into the front of the body from there. So let's let the leg go and fire it through. And again, so he kicks, so I catch, drag it past my body so he can't get away from me. So I kind of reload, so I put my weight into my lead leg, I'm going to hit the body. And obviously, if there, if I wanted to, I'll get the elbow straight after, or again, if he kicks, so I catch, drag it through, I can body, and obviously, then I can sweep from there. Now I'll show you from this angle so you can see how I catch the leg. So as he kicks, I catch near his ankle and I drag it through and put it past my body. If he kicks and I catch it too high, so if I catch it here, and I'm just going to say it, it's too hard for me to drag past my body. If he keeps his leg quite stiff now, it's going to be hard for me to get it through and hard for me to get around. So I have to make sure it's by the ankle and it makes it easy to pull it through. Like I say then, I can strike from there. But another one to hit to the body, so I'm using my hands. Is a fire my right uppercut first. Right now, a lot of people is a kind of cover this way. So if Jamie covers, who's covered up, again, I'm going to open him up to land into the body from there. So I fire the right uppercut again to cover that up, and then land turning. And again, if you look at my positioning, so I've got uppercut, so my shoulders going in front, I'm leaning towards the target again, weights on my lead leg, and I turn through to hit to the body. And again, so I right uppercut, so I drop in, hit to the body. Go straight from the opposite angle. Again, so it's right uppercut, so coming through again to cover. So my weight's on that lead leg, shoulders turned in, and I can strike past the arms to get into the liver. And again, so I'll go right uppercut, left body, and then come back. Right, last one we'll just quickly do with the body punch. Not very simple. If Jamie does lead push kick, he's able to kick through. Right, this is more when I'm trying to press forward on someone and then using that kick to keep me away. As he front kicks, so I'm going to knock it across my elbow here. See, so I keep my head covered. Right, straight in from there, because I've used his lead, I've opened him up down the middle. I'm going to fire that cross in, but as I use my cross, so I use it to drop my shoulder down. And now again, I'm going to fire into the body, and just for now, I'm going to finish it with a kick to the leg. Again, again, so he goes lead, push kick, so I knock it through, cross straight down the middle, hit to the body, and then kick the leg. Okay, let's show you the opposite angle quickly. Again, so he goes lead, push, kick, so knock it through, cross straight down the middle, hit the body, kick the leg, and then back to position. Okay, guys, um, so we've got some more questions to answer, and we've got quite a few, actually. Uh, I'm going to fire something at you first, Damien. So someone's asked, when you're coaching fighters um, for MMA, how do you tell them to, let's say they come from a more Thai background, how do you tell them to adapt their stance from Muay Thai for MMA, is there a one set style or does that, is that depend on the individual? I think it depends on the individual because um, I've got some guys that come to me that are quite Muay Thai based, so I've got quite a Muay Thai stance, I just leave them alone, I don't, it's easy for me to kind of coach. I've got other guys that are a little bit more like they'll bounce around and more on the side of the feet, again, I don't want to change what they're doing, I just need to kind of um, make sure that when they're delivering the techniques, they're how I'm looking for, if that makes sense. So I don't want to start correcting people because they've, if they've come from like a, a karate background or a taekwondo or whatever, they're obviously good at that system and that's obviously what works for them. Like I say, it is mixed martial arts. I'm not trying to round someone off into a style that I'm particularly looking for on there to help with their striking and make sure it's proficient in what they're doing, but making sure they're keeping what they're already good at, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm... So a really good point is, it, obviously for strike and MMA, you've got to work uh, the strengths of your background, but also take on board what you've got to watch out for in terms of mobility, wrestling, uh, obviously other striking disciplines, the, the challenge they bring, but reinventing the wheel is not always the best no. thing, is it? No. Uh, and the, another question from, for, for, from one of the uh, people watching, for both of you actually, but I'll pass it to Jamie first, is... If you had to fight Damien, yeah. um, or someone from a high level Muay Thai background, where would you feel most, where would you feel was the most risk for you in terms of, in the fight, what would you have to watch um, Probably the most risk for me fighting somebody of the calibre of Damien would be on the ropes, um, because a lot of, <coughs> a lot of the way that um, a sport, a sport um, kickboxer fights, or a sports points fighter fights, um, revolves over movement. Obviously if they've got you against the ropes, they've, they've restricted your movement. 
and that's why you'll see that a lot a lot more now in the um, in sport kickboxing um, they're bringing uh, a, a lot of boxing coaches in so when you're getting on the ropes you know they, they're working inside as well they're not just relying on keeping a, a good fighter at range and picking them off because it's not so much the case anymore everybody's evolving everybody's pushing things from other styles and stuff so all of a sudden it's not like it would be as simple as to say all right he's karate he's just going to be like this or he's tight he's just going to be like this or he's taekwondo he's just going to be it, it's not like that anymore there's so much being thrown into the different melting pots now it, it's really hard um, so but like what i do I, I i try my best not to get cornered and i work my movement i would work my movement and a lot of my movement that i've been working would be lateral movement as well because obviously as soon as you start backing up you're going to hit a rope at some stage because if i can lateral and circle then it gives me more sc more scope but it would be only a matter of time before they caught up with you um, realistically um, but then you just deal with that when it, when it happens yeah. the same question to you well, exactly the same thing I, the idea for me I'd, I'd want to press I want to get him on the ropes again I'll be using my foot so he tries to move laterally I can try and corner him up so it, exactly what he's kind of he's not wanting me to do is how I try and press with someone that moves around I thought people the same that do that it's really infuriating when you're running around and like I said eventually you can catch up with them sometimes they're just gone again really quickly so, so essentially you'd want to not give him the space that he wants yeah. he's going to want the space and you're going to need to take that away from him. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, who, who are good examples then of fighters? Um, who, some fights, Raymond Daniels you springs got Raymond, to mind. You've got Michael Page. I mean, Michael's off the, he's off on the team, really, the B team with me and whatnot. And uh, I mean, he moves like no other. <laughs> he's so awkward and he's powered and he's, he's really so awkward and he, and he can bang. But the way that he controls the distance, um, I've seen people try to march him down. He just, he just can find the gaps. He can just find the gaps. So he's a perfect example. Um, one thing that I would say though is when I have um, when I've fought people you know from different backgrounds and they have tried to march me down and whatnot I, I at some stage I always to man I always manage to ruin their game plan with the movement because uh, like Damien was saying then it's frustrating they start to get and then they start making uh, they start doing things that they wouldn't normally do uh, so it takes them out of their game um, and that gives me a little bit of an advantage on the movement but like I say they will catch up with you at some stage because the, the, the rings aren't massive so you are going to get caught up some stage and you're going to get caught with some shots um, but the thing is it's if you can weather that storm that's why it's down to what Daniel's in there a minute so where are we moving to next for your next bit of the training right i'm going to cover the back kicks um i want to work on the back kicks now okay so the first back the, back, the first back kick that i'm going to do is going to be the one from a standard a standard range so i'm just outside boxing range okay I'm going to give you one in boxing range in a minute, okay? but at the moment I'm just outside boxing range, so maybe I'm in the kicking range, alright? Um, so let me can you put your hands like I just want to smash into your head. I'll pull it up, okay? So this is what we, this is how we work the back kick, okay? What I do from here, okay, it's not about getting the height. A lot of people, they try and jump and get as high as they can and then throw the kick out. The higher that, you, that you're getting, the more time it's taking, alright? So what I'll do from here with my back kick, I use my shoulders as I rotate, yeah. I won't try and jump high, but I will get my feet off the floor in case they try to sweep me or smash my legs or whatever. But it's just a bit of a safety mechanism for me, all right? So I'll be on my toes, okay, because I'm, I'm always active moving, okay? From here, like I said, I'm just out of range, okay? I'll jump and I'll pop the kick. When I pop the kick, I'll make sure that I recoil the kick back off, all right? I don't want to try and push through my target with the kick. Reason being is, um, if I was fighting some of these experiences then, okay, and, and he rode the kick out, okay, I'd end up in a right, really bad position. I'd end up like this, and I'd get destroyed. Okay? So from here, I'd be on my toes this way. I'll throw the kick up, one, pop, this way, and just pop it off. Okay? I'm not going to land it. Okay? So from here, I'm up, one, pop, and I'll pop it in this way. Now, when you do that, it, it, I mean, it looks really, really flashy, but when you break it down, it's pretty simple. Okay? What I'll do, I'll rotate. Once I get to a certain point, I'll spot... And then from there, all I'm doing is splitting my legs this way. That's all you're doing, you're splitting your legs out. Okay? Now, some people go, eh, on a couple of my videos, they go, no, that's a, that's a jump turning kick. Jump turning kick, jump back kick. They're very similar, okay? They are very similar. Anything, when I jump, turn, and hit you with a side kick or a back kick, we call it a jump back kick, just so we're all the same pace, so you know what it is, all right? So like I said, from here, what I've done, I turn, Rotate. I don't do this. I don't go. 
Like that angles as I can, I'll never do that, yeah? I'll keep it streamlined. So from here, I have a law, then I pop it bam, bam, this way and pop the kick in this way. Alright? Now, I'll never just go with the kick. So there'll be a disguise for the kick, first of all. So what I do, I get his attention high, first of all. So high one, make him, get him jerking, okay? See what he's gonna throw at me. Now, a good disguise for a back kick is a backhand. So what I'll do, I might, I may to throw the shot, I might just fake the shot, it doesn't matter, okay? But when it's retracting, it'll take me into my spin, okay? So as it's coming back, it'll automatically take me into the spin, all right? So, you can work it from either fake, or I might, I might try and land the shot, and then as I'm coming back, then I'll go into the kick. It's up to you. But I'll never, I'll never kick cold, so I'll never just go straight from here, go for the kick. Not that much chance of landing. Okay? So from here, fake out first, maybe do a few twitches. Then, once I feel comfortable, my range is good, when the arm comes back, bam, that's when I want it with a kick. Okay, all right. So, watch again. Put me on my toes, faking out, seeing what's happening, okay. Bam, then one, when this elbow comes back, it'll take you into the rotation. Bam, and it with that kick. Okay. Now, that then was from basically a comfortable sparring range, all right? I'm not through it from out here, ever. Because uh, I'm going to miss this one. <laughs> so from here, if I throw it from here and he just moves back or whatever, as I jump, you're in big trouble. Real big trouble. So, this would be my range, all right? Or this, okay? Even touching, okay? You can throw it from there. Now, how you do this is, when you throw the kick, you don't no longer jump up, or jump out, okay? Now, you are gonna take away from the power slightly because of the directional force. So, if I've got a shot going that way, when I'm jumping that way, you're going to pull slightly away from me. So it's not as powerful, but the thing is, it's less expected. Because uh, I, I don't think you'd expect me to jump back in from here, would you? Okay, it's really, it is, it is less expected, okay? So you've got a good chance of landing it. So what should I do? So I'll so be here, and as I jump, I go out on a 45. I don't jump straight back, because I pull myself too far away, okay? And obviously I don't stay on the spot, so I end up kicking him in. In the knots or something, yeah? So from here, I mean, this close, okay? And up, bam, hit with that. Nice and neat shot deep underneath, okay? I'm not gonna smash it, okay? So from here, this close, up, bam, this way, all right? So that's from that range. Now, how you can drill this at home and practice it, this is how I do it, is I use the wall. So basically, you put your shoulder on the wall, okay, this way, and you drill the kick from there, all right? Put a piece of tape on the wall, insulation tape or whatever, and that's what you want to be aiming for, ideally. Okay? So you'd have your shoulder on the wall. Obviously, we're, not, we're never in a real situation, we won't be like that. Okay? We might be clean something as soon as I feel him break off, then I'd load up into the shot or I'd touch first. Okay? So I'd be here, I'd touch, bam, bam, then up into the kick, snap it in. Okay? So from here, this close, this close, okay? jumping out, not up, out, bam, bam, this way, hit me that kick. Now, obviously, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd really let that go. I'd sink it in this way, okay? Even if he covered it, what you find is, because he's such close range, so if Damien had like an orthodox guy, like this, if my heel hits his arm, it'll skin off and hit his body, okay? Because I'm so close, the angle of my foot, um, I'll get towards the camera, because I don't have time to get my, my, my full rotation because I'm so close, the angle of my foot, because my knee's dipped, is this way. So my heel is actually pointing up towards his face this way. So it can slip through gaps really easily. Now what I used to try and do with this is, obviously it won't work in, in tie because you just have shorts, but in the, in the crack in the kickboxing, we wear belts. And I used to aim for the knot on the belt. So if I hit the knot as well, it just sinks it right in even deeper if I can. All right. So my heel will be pointing up because I'm so close. So it'll fit through the small gap, all right? If I hit an arm, it'll skid off a net. If I hit an arm, it'll skid off a net, okay? So long as I'm within this foot of space that I've got here, the width of the body, I'm gonna be fine. It's gonna hit something. It is gonna hit something. And once you generate power, you are gonna hit something without a doubt, without a doubt, okay? Now, 
if you were to mess this kick up at that range, so say I do the kick uh, and somehow I miss it and I land here, you're in trouble. Okay, you are in trouble. All you've got to do from here, okay, is just regroup. Okay? Don't, don't try your best to, to go back to where you were. You spin out this way. Okay? So I move right the way away from you. So if I mess up, so I've done the kick, blah, 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 I've landed here now, I'm in trouble. He could really unload on me. Okay? But what you'll find is if I turn this way and he throws a big right, you go straight into it. Okay? You go straight into it. Okay? So what I do from here, if I ever do a miss with it, I don't often. <laughs> okay, if I ever do wish with it, I'll carry on going this way, bam, so I'm away. Okay, that's how I work that. Okay, guys, yeah. So, the back kick from normal fighting range, okay, you're faking out, okay, you're playing with it first, okay, they might be throwing something. Another good time to throw this kick is if they're attacking with anything that's off the lead. Um, so, like, let's say he throws out, I don't know, a, a, a lead jab. So if the lead jab comes, what I'll do, I'll roll on the jab. So it comes, boom, this way. Because he's extended for that jab. Okay. If he throws the, the lead leg kick, okay, if that comes at me, I'll roll into it again. Boom, and I'm hitting him square again. Okay. Because you obviously you open up at that point to land that kick in. Even a sports points fighter who, who doesn't really um, load the kicks up, you know, they throw straight from there, this way, you'll still catch him. Because you're rolling on the inside of that knee, you can still catch him with that kick, okay? And that's the back kicks for you guys, okay? So we've got, uh, again, more questions, and, and really interesting okay. questions, in, in, in my opinion, is, um, and again, they're going to be a bit gaming to begin with. Obviously, Jamie's just been coaching. So, obviously, like we said before, the craft style, and Jamie in particular, movement and length, um, and obviously from MMA fights that we've seen recently, uh, how, how usable would be the, the I mean, and Jamie actually mentioned, but how usable would be the calf kick and how would you, how would you deliver it against Jamie given the way that he's moving at the moment? Again, if you listen to his stance, it depends on, if we're going to kick and he kind of moves back, I'll probably not bother as such with a straight off kick. It'd probably be more, but well, I'd use it to kind of come through, so I'd have to kind of, Buy some shots in, so he's worried, especially as well. I've got four rounds gloves on, he's going to be quite concerned about these. So I'm kind of using that to obviously attack on that leg, and then sometimes I, I might want to kind of move around as well at the same time. It all depends on how he's planting. If he's dancing around, I probably I'd have to fire some first to get him to plant. Yeah, or I'd say be concerned. So well, if he starts moving around and kind of like that, then I can kind of like fire it through from there. That probably wasn't a hard shot, but after a couple, especially five minute rounds going into the second round, there are a couple of them, it's going to start taking its toll and he's going to be less likely to be bouncing out. Obviously then I can fire the kicks in from there, but then again, I've got to watch if he does start getting hurt, that's when he might shoot in and take me down as well. So there's, there's, there's a lot of variables that I've got to kind of play out. Like don't, because they've been successful at the moment, ever since we've got Madden calf kicks, don't just keep obviously trying to finish fights that way because Especially if you get someone who's, say, because there are a few that are quite, say, if you look at um, like Jose Aldo and those that are quite Muay Thai based, they're very square. Yeah. And a calf kick, it's, it's very easy to defend if you're in a square base. And obviously, if they've got a good takedown defense as well, then they're going to be okay. So don't kind of just focus solely on that calf kick. Like, um, like for me as well, so when asked how I do it, is I've said this down because of his side on. If I went calf kick now and if he just went side kick, Oh, it's going to stop me straight away at the same time. I was just going to ask, could I ask a question? How, you, how, would, you, how would you deal with me with my sidekick? Uh, a lot of it would be, um, when would you throw it? Uh, this is the thing. It, with it being a sidekick, you can throw it at any, any time. No, um, what I mean is, um, what, what would I, because like for me, I'd probably start kind of just nudging, you know, right. just to kind of see. But yeah. see, when I'm nudging, I'm yeah. not in any danger. Right. So I, I'm not coming here. Yeah. Because we're like quite small. I'd probably throw it. So if you did your nudge, yeah, I'd probably throw it about now. Yeah. I swear. If, say, if it was that leg, so again, so doing that leg, so it'd be yeah. the same thing. Boom. <sighs> I'd use that. Same as we did. Yeah. yeah, so I'd yeah. use this to knock it through. Um, because what it is, like, I don't want to, because it might be going to my face to try and catch it this way, so it's a bit risky. So I'd want to kind of rock, knock it through so I can come in. But if he goes the other way, I wouldn't probably go, because I'm going to hit his shin. So 
it's going to hurt my arm at the same time. So again, it depends on, I probably have to get hit with one first, which I probably don't want, to kind of see where yeah. he's going. But if he tries to go through that one, I'll probably try and scoop it around this way with the lead arm. I personally don't use this to defend anything that's coming at me, because how I am now, if I kind of scoop this way, so my body is kind of half on the side, there's a chance it might slip off, especially in my tie, they've got oil, Vaseline, all sorts of stuff all over them. It's very easy for it to slip. Again, if you go to kick, I can just kind of, yeah. you know, if I kind of judged it properly. Yeah. If I go with this arm, I'm quite square on. Yeah. So it's not wrong, it's just my own personal preference, I'd use this. So if the lead, I'd probably hit it with the elbow, which is why it's going to hurt him at the same time. If he's going on with that one, I'd probably try and scoop. That is how we defend against yeah. it. That is how we do it. That's how we defend against it. So that's good to know. I think, you know yourself, because as you've covered a lot of other martial arts, generally, stuff that's effective is quite generic mm -hmm. in all systems. When you kind of go, because oh, obviously I have a lot of MMA guys, and sometimes I'll show them some clinch from the right in Muay Thai, and I'll go, oh, that's record run and wrestling, or that, you know, like it's, it's everything's quite yeah, generic. Yeah. And what the, leading off that then, um, one of the things that obviously the team is showing here is how much length that the and the movement is, is, is long, is it long and straight? How would you try and close the distance um, to maybe, maybe again, maybe one of the things, like I said, pushing against the ropes, get into the clinch. Um, uh, and obviously you're known for being quite pushing the pace and pressure fighting. How would you try and close the distance given the fact that Jamie's very good at the movement. So look, um, again, it, I'd have to, any any combat sports, it's not about just throwing it, you, you learn to breathe, you do some, and you take a okay, that's how he does that, carry on, do something else, okay, that's how he does that, go back to the first thing, are you still doing that? That's a habit, if that makes sense, you know, that's something you can kind of work it on. So say, just a simple one, very easy, like round out, kick, if I hit Joe now, Joe just moves out of the way, look, okay, so okay, he's moved out of the way, kick him again, Moved out of the way, right? So we kick him again. Yeah. So I hop through. Yeah, so I'd, I'm just kind of, it's not a big jump, but I'm just traveling distance to be able to connect. So if, say, the ropes would be just behind him there, yeah. I could use a kick, he can go onto the ropes. Bang. I've kind of used it to, to kind of travel that distance, so I can use it on that aspect. He probably wants me to come bulldozing in, so I need to start doing some other things. Like even like um, just like little touches, yeah, just tapping on the leg. Now like just small, small movement. Boom, then I can kind of use that to slowly press in. While he's concerned about all of this, gradually I'm just kind of edging, and I'm saying I can start unloading properly. And I, but again, it's using making sure if he dances off this way, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not following him. Yeah, I don't want to just start. Yeah, yeah. And off he goes. And and this one's for you. Um, so, there's a lot of people that sometimes look down on one style versus another, and especially karate's had a bit of a bad rep at times, yeah. given um, how it's sometimes coached and how it's sometimes taught. Uh, what, when you see these uh, you know, things being said, having been you know, world champion, fought full contact karate, yeah. uh, and travelled all over the world, what, what's your opinion? on uh, where karate stands in terms of other striking sports, you know. The, the, the thing the thing is, I find is, karate, it, uh, see, I'm from, I'm from like a, more of a sports, when competing wise, in your own combat base, karate gets a bit of a, a bad rep. But if I'm all my hands up, I'm rightly so on some occasions, if I'm being honest with you, because there's a lot of it, it I mean, it started like in the late 90s, it got watered down and it became about money and throwing up your schools and whatnot. Um, so it, it kind of, it lost its initial grip. That uh, I mean, you watch a you watch an older uh, traditional karate guy, something like Frank Brennan, so they'll take your head off your shoulders. It don't matter what you're doing. The they impose their will onto you that much. You, you won't have an answer. They just they're, they're larger than life type thing. Whereas in the Thai boxing, I think they've stayed true. I really do. I, I don't think that they've um, I don't think that they've ever sold out. Do you know what I mean? They've stayed true to the origins and true to the styles and. You know, that's why a lot of Thai boxing gyms, you know, they struggled, uh, well, a few years ago, they struggled, you know, getting numbers in because it was so authentic and it was rough and whatnot, you know, they were doing it real. Whereas, like I said, a lot of the, the, the karate guys, they sold out, but you've got one extreme to another. So you've got, like, your kind of watered-down version, then you've got, like, your, your real version. Um, and I 
think it's the same in a lot of things. It's the part of Ty. I think Ty is the only one that stayed authentic right away through. Um, and now he stood the test of time. And I think now he, it's, that's probably why, in my opinion, I think that Ty Boxer is bigger than Mike Sport. Mike Sport, you know, like karate and stuff like that. Um, and and I, it's, it's, in my opinion, yeah, it has had a bit of flat, but rightly so in the past on some occasions. But a lot of the time, now, people are seeing the trueness of it coming through and whatnot. And they're going, oh, you know what? That is effective. And like we said this earlier, it, it, it's not the song, it's the singer. Uh, it depends who's doing it. Um, and it's okay, like, uh, it'd be nice and controlled here and everything. But once once you get onto that environment, and if that person's like, right, this is on, you know, you, you can hit them with a break, it doesn't matter whether they're trying and things going on on you. Um, so, yeah, rightly so, it did get a bit of flack in it. It is in some some situation, it is, like, looked down upon and whatnot. Um, that can be down to the person and all, though, can it? A bit of narrow-mindedness, because I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll watch Taekwondo and I think, oh, like that, how can I make that work? And I'll watch some of Damien stuff and think, that's nice, oh, how can I make that work for me? Do you know what I mean? So if you're open-minded, you'll grow. If you're never-minded, you're going nowhere, you're just going to stay in your little bubble. Um, and you'll find a lot of people who make these comments that you're staying in. What's, what's, <laughs> what's your view, Damien? Because obviously elite strikers recognise elite strikers, don't they? It doesn't really matter what art form they're from, people who are good recognise other people. What's your opinion on, on that? I think, like, um, so like with karate, um, with all, I think all of martial arts, it's how it's trained that is the big thing. So you got them, some of the schools where they're just punching in the air and it, like they're going against someone that's letting them do things. That's where it kind of falls short. But if they're sparring, not trying to kill each other, but it's actual, I'm with someone who's coming against me, so I'm, I've got some kind of resistance. And obviously, like, your pad work and your conditioning. I think it's all gonna, like it's all effective. Like if you look at some of the, um, like the, I, I think I, uh, I was at a martial arts show and I watched the Kaikushinkai tournament. I remember watching it thinking, I wonder that, because they just like tearing and lumps out of each other. But again, it's it's real, it's it's on, if that makes sense. So I think a lot of it just stems down to how it's trained. So if these other systems are doing pads, sparring, bag, resistance work against an actual person that's trying not to allow them to do something they'll kind of say okay that didn't work with them if I do it this way that will work with them they're going to start like um, developing themselves as well because like, there might be something that um, it's like Jamie does but I might not, not be able to do it exactly how he's doing it if I just adjust something very slightly because I'm a bit shorter I'm not as big so I might need something else then because I'm with someone that's resisting against me I can learn how to kind of make it work for me if that makes sense yeah no completely so, um, going off then, what's the next part of the training from your point of view now, Nadine? What I'm going to quickly go over is um, doing a low kick to the rear leg. Uh, most people, their lead leg is quite conditioned because this is the one that generally takes a lot of battering. Right? Going to the back leg, obviously, it's quite, obviously from a normal distance here, that's quite a lot of distance to try and travel to kick into that leg. Right? Now, I can just step through and step and kick, and if you look at them kicking, I've got my arm coming across this way to make sure obviously I don't get caught with any punches. However, if they're quite good at moving back, and he moves back, it's going to be quite hard for me to land, right? So I'm going to fire some punches in. Okay, so I'll fire some shots in right now. From here, I'm not going to switch and kick. I can do, it's all right, but for me, if I'm firing a shot, so I've moved my leg back, I'm still quite close to the target, right? From there, I'm going to step this leg out and I chop heavy onto the back leg. Right, so the reason why I do it that way, when I'm firing some shots at someone, if I come back, this can allow him time to start firing something back at me. Whereas this way, he still thinks I'm firing something at him, but I've put myself in position now to chop heavy on that leg. So my upper body stays wherever it is. So from here, so my lead leg steps back. As I step back, I'm in a safe pole position. I'm going to drop down, so I'm dropping my weight into the kick, and I drop heavy onto that back leg. Right now, a lot of people aren't used to taking kicks on here, so it only takes a good few, and obviously I've seen fights get finished quite easily. Now for me, I normally feel like a right hook. So again, firing some shots, I use that hook to hide what I'm doing with my foot from here. So just punch, and I come through. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be a punch, I can just push the person. So I kind of push, when I push me in the shoulder, and I hack down onto that leg, so I'm going to go in the opposite way. So again, so I'll get him covered up, up, and down onto the leg, and again, to get him to cover up, and he 
you chop down onto that leg. This is more when someone's kind of, you've got them pinned up on the ropes, they're shelled up, they're not running around, I want to sort of hack in to that leg from there. Using the same position, while he's, again, as he's kind of hooked up to his weight, so his lead leg, quite easy to go that way, and then come through to open him up in that aspect. So the same thing, so firing through, so my leg comes back, arms coming across, protect, and I hit into that leg. As I pull this back now, I've opened him up for the uppercut. Again, I'll show you that from the other way. So again, so I'm getting him covered up, up, so you hack in, up the middle from there. So again, so you're positioning, put that leg back, my upper body stays where it is, so I'm not moving back. Coming this way, put, comes down, you're going to chop, then hack down onto the leg. And again, so coming back, drop, hack down, then you kind of disguise it, up, and you're hacking in. This arm's very important, just in case. As I'm coming in, if I'm kicking, he starts firing some punches at me now, or so I can get caught. So while he's got his shoulder up, so I've got him kind of covered here. So if he does start firing some shots at me, I can kind of cover up, not using the long guard to keep my head quite protected. And again, we were talking about earlier, about things being quite generic, where I kind of covered up that way. If you noticed earlier, when Jeremy did like a spinning back kick, and he said if he missed and he kind of moved off, he's more or less in the same position, as he moved away, so again, so my chin's covered, this is keeping them at range, and I've got this hand up to protect myself. So again, firing some shots, kick shots, firing punches back at me, so I can use that to cover, and again, I kind of just step back to keep myself safe. So, a um, <coughs> few more interesting questions, actually. Um, this one, uh, Chris, for obvious reason. Um, when you were competing, what advice would you give someone to, who's, who wants to compete? How, how did you, um, what tips you got for recovery after training? You know, so obviously to train a lot during the week. Uh, but it, I was young, and then, so I just, I just dealt with it. It's just a bit hard to, obviously it's the old school, you know, you just, it's not really much, obviously if you've got an injury, you go home, ice yourself, and like now they have a lot of ice baths and things, and, for me, I just trained, I was a bit sore the next day, or got up and... Well, you have options, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just really hard now. Like, I just, I just trained. It just, there's no real secret behind it. No, no, it, that, that's the thing, you kind of, you get into a routine, depending on your, your coach and your gym, doesn't it? You kind of fall into the patterns that they, they work with, so I'm guessing it, it does depend on where you, where you I think it depends on, like, um... Like your goal, like, cause obviously a lot of time when I was training, I had a fight coming up, so oh, I'm not trying to bet they're training, I've got to go and train, I'd obviously go and train, but then as I got more experience, and I was quite high level, then you start listening to your body, so if I feel a bit burnt out today, I'll, I'll have today off, or I'll just light one today, and I'll pick it back up. So sometimes, like if you're peaking a bit too soon, then just take a couple of days off, then obviously you like, go back into it, but um, early out, I was just constantly fighting the gym. One thing I would say is, if you have, I mean, I'm I'm 43 soon, so I mean, it, it, it started taking its toll a little bit on me now, as you can see, I look like Robocop, all strapped up and everything. If you do have a bad injury, you know, don't, don't try and be an hero and train through it. it cause you just, you end up, you, you, your standard of life as you get older isn't as good as what it could have been because you're in pain a lot of the time and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? So if you do have a, a you know, quite a bad injury or something like that, listen to your body, you know, just just chill, have that little bit of time out, okay, have that little bit of time out and you'll feel better for it when you, you know, when you do retire from fighting and whatnot. Because I, I mean, I competed solid for 27 years um, and I feel fortunate that I'm in, I'm in bits, but I'm in good condition to, in, as opposed to what I really should be, do you know what I mean? So try and listen to what your body, like you just said, listen to what your body's telling you. If you if you've injured it, like so, you say you broke. Yeah, I tr I've trained with broken hands, and I thought we broke that. It's just it's just it's daft. It's just daft. If you break your hand, then you've got a fight coming up. Don't fight. Get that right first, because you're never going to compete to your maximum because you know you, you're maimed. Like yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, <laughs> stuff that I've done, I probably wouldn't let my students do. Yeah, the same thing. And how do you both coach techniques that, oh, so let's, let's choose the round basket. If you use each other as a partner, how do you both teach that round basket? Because obviously the Muay Thai round basket, the karate round basket, they were 
seeing things, two different things, right? If you were to coach each other now, how what would that look like on that on the round house pitch? Uh, well, you can watch uh, it. Um, for me, um, if you've got a circle, you want to get from point A to point B in the fastest way, straight through the middle. So I'm kicking. I don't want to be coming too round. It's quite direct. I'm coming direct. It's coming in. It's so coming up. It turns over at the same time. What that does as well is if Jamie's pressing forwards, stopping him coming in. So I'm, my force is going that way as opposed to just swinging round. And generate like a, there's a lot of little ways to generate more power. Like um, you might have seen where you see like in my side, I do like a little bounce this way. Well, that's just, like similar to like if you had a basketball when you bounce the ball off hard off the floor and it explodes up. So I'm bouncing through. But I wouldn't just kick someone who's I'd have to do it when they're off balance and say, say if Jamie kicked me now. I could catch, push, bomb, then I'd kind of land that through from there. But again, a lot of it's going more direct. And all techniques, what I'm trying to hit in front of me, so my force has to go this way. Even when I'm hooking, I'm not hooking round, I'm hooking, I'm quite centred, so my weight is here. I'm not kind of swinging off to sound the kick. I'm not coming round to generate power, I'm coming in to generate power. Even if I'm going backwards, He's coming at me, so I'm coming in to stop him from pressing forwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we do it. We do it quite different. Um, first of all, we we we'll drill off the front leg. Um, so what what I'd uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, so what I'd do, um, we try and get it. So obviously we're moving rather than starting from a standstill, because then you've got to get energy going and then get the energy to the kick. If the energy's already going, I'm just redirecting the energy from the body then. That's how we do it. So we'd start off probably with a lead leg. Um, ideally, I want to try and throw it from roughly where the foot already is. This way, that's where it'd be. Um, the reason being, I mean, the, the kick that Damien threw would, would be more powerful. Uh, but we'll fancy that though. <laughs> but, yeah, but what we work on is the speed getting the... Because what, what, what I find personally when I'm teaching it is... The shots that you don't see, they're the ones that like, they're the ones that spark you, they're the ones that are a little knock you out. Um, so I try and get the shot as quick as I can from point A to point B this way. Like Damien said, uh, inside, they'll come straight, chop straight way through, okay? Now on my back leg run kick, very similar to yours. So it's, so it's very similar to yours. I in traditional karate, okay, this is how traditional karate do it, they come round with the chamber this way. That's how they come with it. I don't do it that way no more. Um, not for a long time. I'll um, I'll come up on the forty-five degree angle with it. Um, what I find is, if my range is close and they've got like an orthodox guard like I've got, as a rule, people's hands don't point up like this. They're like that. So I find that if I come up on the angle, if I hit the outside of the arm, it kind of guides it as well to the face. So I'll throw it from here, and it'll come up on the forty-five this way, just round from the back. Very very similar. Um, only thing is, I won't press the knee in like, like the other one, but I want to try it when we get back. <laughs> yeah, so slightly different, slightly different. Pros and cons of both, I think. But it's like a different thing then, kind of like, as you're talking about the different angles, where say if I was, say if you just kind of check and yeah. in my tights, if I kind of kick, okay, sometimes if I change the angle of my kick, it might not read it as easier, so it's quite important to understand how to do different like kicks. So say like when I've come in more direct this way, Sometimes I might try and come through, through to get it. over. You know, you might have to change sometimes. Um, what it is with all techniques, you'll have your textbook way of doing them, but then you have to adapt to the situation it's given to you at the time. So yeah. I think it's quite important to understand how to definitely change quickly. What, one that I do like to use, and I find that it catches a lot of people off guard, is what I'll do as I throw the roundhouse kick, um, I'll take the other foot off the floor. Um, I can't even. Um, so imagine, imagine they was coming at me. What I do, I basically I foot swap. So on my front foot, they come to my back foot. So it whips. So as they come this way, and I catch them that with that, because it's all they see is you going back. And normally, if you're going back, they're launching some kind of attack. So there's going to be some kind of opening. Okay. And normally, if somebody's launching an heavy attack at you, and in the, they're in an orthodox stance, it's normally coming off that backhand. And that's why I normally catch a hell of a lot of people. And because I do it very similar to how Damien does it, I come straight with the kick. 
it comes up and it normally catches them flush. As opposed to coming round like holding traditional crafts here, where it can be bypassed. If they move forward, so imagine that's my foot when he came in, that'd go past and then you get picked up, dumped and whatever in the deep end. Um, that's why I like to come straight with it. So I, if he was to, so I've got space. So if you just walk forward, I catch him with that. And I have a lot of success for that. Even with a bad knee. <laughs> okay, so um, again, um, lots of great questions, but we'll move on to the, Jamie's final part of the training. First, then we'll ask some more. What was the last part of the training? Uh, the last bit that I'm going to do, I'm going to work um, some fakes and some footwork. Um, now, what, what I'm going to do is explain to you how I, when I was competing, how I'd work, because I can tell you now, because I don't fight no more, I retired in 2009. So, what I do is, when I'm working my feints and my fit and my fakes, I never fight left stance neither. Um, quick story behind that is, I was an orthodox fighter, always fought left stance. I used to have an absolute nightmare fighting southpaws. So I thought, I won't become a southpaw, it's making it a nightmare for everybody. So I drove everything on the opposite side and I became a southpaw fighter, that's what I worked on. Okay. Now, what I used to do, rather than fake, to set up a technique, I'd fake so that they'd tell me a story. And what I mean by that is, that if, say, for example, me and, me and Damon were sparring, okay, I'd be, I'd be up range so that I'm safe, okay, and what I'd do, I'd work my fakes. I want to get some kind of response, okay, from him. So, whatever response it would be, bam, okay, yeah. So I know that he thought that my front hand were coming, so he poured that hand down, okay, yeah. So he's told me a story. I'm not just going to go with that, though, okay. I'd, obviously, I'd, I'd spend a little bit of time, and then I'd do the same fake again. If the, if the reaction was the same, oh, yeah, that's the same, now I know he's going to drop that front hand on my attack, okay. He's going to pour that down, and more than likely, the shots that are going to come after that pour are going to be a very great hand, okay, yeah, more than likely, all right. So I know what he's going to do if I do launch that attack. So that, he's told me a story, so that gives me a little bit of an heads up, all right. So that's what I used to do with a hell of a lot. You get different people who do different things. Now in the sport, um, sport kickboxing, sport crack, sport points fighting, whatever you want to call it, okay, you had to you had to deal with a lot of people who had really, really fast legs. And I don't mean fast legs, I mean sometimes you, you just see a flash and the kick will come past your face. These guys are, are lightning, okay. I used to be a one time, okay. And what they do, okay, they're fake of it, bam! And, and, and the foot will come up as soon as you budged. And you could be this close. Yeah, you think that you've gone with that big right they'll nail you because of control distance and they'll sink, they'll sink you right onto that kick. Okay? So that's why I found this was really good. Okay? So if I had somebody who was like a defensive sidekick fighter who was going to drum with that sidekick, I'd go, bam, right, he's shown that. Okay? Let's just make sure. <laughs> think, yeah, okay, right, I've got to watch that. So what I'll do, I'll break off at an angle when I hit so he misses, that type of thing. So I use my fakes to tell a story as well as setting up shots. I hope that made sense. I hope I explained that good. Um, yeah, so basically, they're going to tell you. So if, if he's fake, if, if Dame is faking at me, and every time he fakes, I go like that, you know that that big less going to come. Yeah? So it gives you an eggs up, so you know what you're going to be coming. Okay? Right, a footwork drill now. Now, this footwork drill, this is something that I'd use a lot, a hell of a lot. If I do it, I'll, I'll do it in orthodox stance, because 90% of you're going to be orthodox. Okay? So from here, what I'll do, I'll stay. Are we okay on camera the next one? Yeah? I'll stay at a safe range. I don't want to get too close to him. All right? And what I'll do, I'll work these fakes. See what he's got. See what his movement's like. Okay? No, I'll be here. Bam, this way. See what he's doing. Bam, this way. No, every time I throw a fake, I don't know if you noticed, I didn't move my back foot. Okay? I only fake from my front foot. Okay? So I'm at a safe range here. If he did attack, I know I can get back out and move off or whatever I have to do. Okay? If I go both feet in, I'm, you're knackered. If he does launch an attack, you, you're going to struggle to get back out. So I'll make sure that I keep my back foot roughly where it is. Okay? Now, I use this one for opening up. It's really, really, really simple. Okay? Now, if I was on a match fight, so say it could be a Saturday night, I could be at a smoker fighting on a show, and then Sunday at a championships fighting all day there. Okay? So, your body takes a beating, so you want to get it a lot less. So this is something that I'd use, and because people, because you was, because I was out there so much, and as a point fighter, you will be out there so much because there's so many championships. People have camcorders now, and they video you and stuff like that, and you know they can get you down, they can nail you down. Okay, so a lot of people knew that 
basically I fought in Southport. Um, so what I'd do on some occasions, if it, especially if it was a smoker, a full contact fighter or something like that, I'd, um, I'd come out in my left stance. Okay. So I'd come out in the left stance this way. Okay. So straight away they're thinking, all oh, right, I've drilled for Southport. For, um, okay. But what I'd do sneakily, I'd get my me, me, me good side in front of me. And now I'd do that safely is, I'm out of range, as you can see, I'm well out of range. Basically, I push that front foot straight the way across, okay? So I push it across, boom, now I'm in range, I can touch him, okay? But in his mind, he just sees me do a lateral movement. He doesn't actually see the distance close, okay? So I watch what I did there. So all I do, my front foot, okay, pushes across, okay? This way, and this one comes in front, that way, all right? So now, as you can see there, I've got, I've got all the good stuff. Here, I'm looking at, like, I'm looking at trouble, okay? Yeah, I'm looking at like rather right, right trouble there. So that'll push across, this will come in front, and now I can touch him. As you here, okay, I'm safe, I can't actually touch him. But because of the lateral movement, they just see you move sideways. Okay, that's all they're gonna see. Alright. So watch that again. It's really, really simple. My front foot will just push across and this will come here. What I used to throw from there is I throw a lead leg side kick, then I drop him with the hands. Okay. Basically, I won't let my front foot touch. Here, bam, and I hit solar plexus if I could. And as they fold, I come straight through with the up and then down on the back of the head. Okay? He straps the back of the head anyway. Okay? So I watch again, foot across, one, now you're in the game. Okay? And now I'm safe again. Alright? So that's one for moving inside. Okay? Now what I want to do, I want to move outside. Okay? So I'm a bit safer. So say, for example, I was fighting somebody uh, from a, like a Thai, Thai boxing background. Okay? He'd probably read me do that maybe a couple of times and then he'd sling that back leg right across me. Okay? So what I do, I want to mix things up a little bit. Now, when I teach this, I call it the landmine. Okay? So I teach it like it like he steps on a landmine. So I'll be on my toes, okay, bouncing, faking and whatnot. What I'll do, I'll push in. By pushing in, okay, that'll get the fake. Whatever reaction he's going to do, it'll get out of him. Because I've already faked him a couple of times, I'm getting him twitchy, I'm getting in his head. As soon as my foot, okay, now makes contact with the floor, boom, bam, I'm breaking, okay? So I'm breaking behind. Now, even if my shot from here don't land, say he cows or, or whatever he does, okay, or I can't come round on me or whatever, he's always going to be playing catch-up. He's always going to be trying to catch up with me, making the next move, you know, after I make the first move, he's second, so I'm always going to have that advantage on movement, okay? So watch that again. So all I do, okay, he might fake out first or whatever, as soon as that foot hits, um, I, just, I, I, I come down on the ball of my foot here. Okay? And this helps with the sport kickboxing stance. Because my foot's already facing more, more or less that side, it's easier to break that line across. Okay? When you square on, it's a little bit harder. Because now I've brought my body closer to my opponent. So if I push in here, he's got a much better chance of catching me with a shot. So this is ideally is better for somebody who fights in a, in a side stance like myself, all right? So I'll watch again. Here, I'll fake a few times. I'll push that foot in. As soon as it hits the deck, then I'll break the line. So it hits one, bam, I'll break this line, okay? Um, I've got a few friends who compete in time, and they now use this. And, you know, they come with this, and they chop down after it. So, you know, these stuff like this can be adapted to all different stuff. Myself, personally, when I broke the line from there, the back, back, rock here, I'll come across, one, back, and then I'll break behind him again. And then normally from there, I throw the head kick. Because they're looking for me. Okay, I know they catch him. All right. So that's a little bit of um, sport points, fine sport, kickboxing, sports, karate, footwork for you. Okay, guys, yeah? Okay, so we've got some... Uh Interesting questions, actually. There's uh, one for you, Damien. Uh, have you got any tips on the switch kick? Um, <clears throat> first thing is make it small as possible. I don't want to be kind of kicking this way. I don't want both my feet to leave the ground at the same time because once I'm in the air, I've got to wait for gravity to put me back down before I can fire the kick off. Um, my left foot moves first. So the way that I teach it in the gym is just kind of think of it, go slide, step, Slide, step, and once you've got the hang of that, you're not sliding, you're not touching the floor. You kind of almost want to make as little noise as possible. You don't want to be kind of, kind of going up too heavy. And then 
you want to get it roughly, so as I'm going from here, so my toe, big toe is roughly in line with my heel, so it's almost like a southpaw stance, but I don't want to be going, bringing it round, or bringing it too far back, and then as I'm kind of going from this way, it's very small, sometimes like you can even get it off the spot, and you're kind of bouncing it through from there, so you haven't got it like over commit, you just got it very quick, so I can kind of tap it through, and just bounce it in, so it's just very steady, you kick the leg, you just kick to score, Jeremy presses forwards, boom, so I can use that and obviously I can kind of use my leg to stop him from coming in. So make sure as small as possible, so not too wide, very, very quick. And you should be on the ball your feet as well. Um, it may sound silly, um, sound the kicking, sound in your knee as well, when your knee should step onto the ball of your feet. If you go flat footed, you kind of send the force into the floor, so you're kind of losing power as you're coming through. So you go, Losing power, it's going to run the ball in your feet, so it stays in your body, and you're pushing up with what you're doing. Yeah, and there's been a question. Do you have a, and this is for it's for all of us actually. Um, do we have what's our favourite strike or combination? I guess I'll pass that to you first. Do you have a favourite strike or combination that you like? Um, strike. I like the suplex one when it comes to uh, striking. I do like the uh, lead leg slash kick. Um, basically, it's not an oot kick. It's not an axe kick. It's coming. Uh, you just said a lot of kick. It's coming. Whoosh, this way, straight past. So I'm like, it's like he's stamping through the thing. I've murdered loads of that. Um, and I do like the lead leg. Do you know what? I just love kicking. Uh, I like my lead leg side kick. It's not as good as it used to be because of uh, injuries and whatnot. And I'm not guaranteed. Uh, no matter what situation is or who I'm fighting with, weight behind, yeah, don't matter if I hit him with a back kick, I'm all that. I'm good. I'm all good. Yeah. Well, what are you doing, Jamie? Um, obviously, I'd like the punch to the body, getting into that liver. Um, I suppose like, a couple of ones, um, the sweep, that I'm quite known for. So, Jamie gets into this. I'm not going to sweep him over. Yeah. But um, as I'm coming in, I don't want to go dead straight. I kind of come again off angle to the side. I'm not bringing my feet together, and I'm not crossing my legs over. Through, to come around this way, and I use my arm and my legs to kind of scissor it through. So I'm coming in, so I'm coming through that way to drop over. If they check, so say if Jamie checks, this makes it very easy. So I can sweep that leg straight over. If again, if he doesn't check, I can just kind of almost wrestling down to the floor, which is obviously I've done a few times. If you're going to do it though, if I keep Jamie, he doesn't block. Don't bother sweeping him. Just boot his legs in, right? If he checks and you want to go for the sweep, and for whatever reason he doesn't check at that time, that's when you can kind of rest them down. And then generally what I do is, if I've gone to sweep and they haven't gone, yeah, boom, I'll fire like a left hook in to try and get a more off balance to put them down that way. Why not give them like a, an eight count, but he takes them to the floor. And obviously it's a bit annoying to keep getting back up. And then the other one I like doing is, Jumping down, elbow, and I'm coming up, and I drop down onto the head. Um, normally, as I come up, you want to get your arm to be straight up into the air. Because if I'm going from here, it's not going to generate that much power. So I'll come up, and then I pull. I normally use this to kind of guide. So I'm coming in, I've kind of got onto them, and I drop down onto the head. Um, it does hurt your arm if you catch it properly at the same time. <laughs> Obviously, it does hurt the head. But... Um, Generally, I don't ever do it, so it's like getting nice pictures at the end of it. But that's something else. And as well, a lot of people, when you just jump, they kind of panic and yeah, they freeze. Yeah. It's really easy boom, to drop down onto the head from there. Well, as soon as someone's asked me, I, I'm not, it's all warm, but I'll practice with Jamie in a second. So, because me and Jamie come from very similar backgrounds, actually, but uh, I was never as competitive as, as Jamie was. We, we did spar when we were younger. I'm not sure if Jamie remembers this, but we did spar quite a few times a year, he'd always try and get him with a hook kick and I'd try and just keep him back and survive. Um, but I, what I would do um, when I was younger, when I came from freestyle, was I'd be very lead leg kicky. So if I'm doing a freestyle, uh, if you just cover the, the right. So I'd throw my lead leg and I'd go for the head. Very often um, people wouldn't expect um, a lead leg to the head as the, as the first shot. So I'd try and I'd hide it, I'd hide and then I'd work off that. And very often I'd sweep uh, and I'd use my lead leg 
uh, round ass kick to the head and that inside foot sweep a lot to destabilize. They would be two of my favorite things. Um, and for me as well, uh, from again, from the freestyle moving to kickboxing, uh, was my axe kicks. I was always a big kicker and I always liked to go for the head. Um, one, I'm very similar to what Jamie was saying about not kicking 90 degrees. When you're going for the head, keeping it tight. But when you threaten the head, then you've got other options to go elsewhere. So head kicks were always a, a big thing for me as well. When I first went to Holland, when I was 17, and I started sparring in the, in the Dutch style, obviously it's a lot more pressure fighting, a lot more level changing. Um, and then obviously you'd be working much bigger combinations, but I'd still be working to the head uh, and then working off the head, depending on how I went from there. So for me, head kicks, lead leg kicks, inside, um, round ass kick, and obviously, like I said, my axe kick, I used to use it off my lead, and i do it a few different ways. I'd either step into it, switch into it, kick into it, but I'd literally take it. I, I was having this conversation with uh, Damon Sampson and Martin Sampo, who are Team GB's Taekwondo guys, and they're phenomenal kickers. And, and it's quite interesting, actually, how as karate, kickboxing, Muay Thai, everyone kicks slightly differently. As an axe kick, and again, I spoke to Steven Lopez, actually, as well, and he's one of the pound-for-pound -pound best Taekwondo fighters in the world. And he would always have to kick straight up like this, whereas I would always slightly go at an angle to try and get over the guard. I don't think there's right or wrong. I'd say mine's probably slower, but because I was using mine a lot more in kickboxing, uh, I'd want to get past a slightly different guard to the one they'd fight in, in, in Taekwondo, which tends to be a bit more like this, whereas in the kickboxing, it's that lead, lead hand that I'd want to get around and then drop, drop down this way. So lead leg kicking for me and anything that works off the combination. Um, and there's only one other question before we go and move on to your last bit, but it's back to you again. Um, someone was asking about what you, what we, how would you coach the differences between the uppercut elbow and the, the, the thrusting elbow? Um, the uppercut elbow, the way I kind of uh, teach it in my gym is brushing back the hair. So I'm just coming through, I take a step in and I strike up. So I want to kind of bring my hands come right in. So again, stepping in and you're coming through. Right now, every elbow you have to step. Um, the mechanics of your elbows are not the same as you're punching. Because if you kind of look, so if I just start firing some punches at Jamie now, so it's all about turning my hips in. Right when I'm elbowing, so it's very different. I'm stepping to get my body weight through. So I'm not going to generate the power of this as I'm elbowing. So I'm stepping forwards and generally my right one. I'll step slightly out, my left, I'd step slightly in. If I'm saying for the opposite way around, my left, I'd step slightly out, left, I step slightly in. But with that uppercut one, you want to go dead straight. So I'm aiming to come in this way. So I'm coming through. And again, so I'm coming through, so uppercut elbow and back and coming in. Uppercut elbow, same the opposite way, I'd step in, uppercut elbow and back. So you're brushing back the hair right now. Thrusting forwards. Um, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. There's one way I can just kind of drop push in. So it's like it's pushing forwards that way. So my aim's kind of stab to the front of the face. So if you kind of like, you're turning your hip slightly, but it's more going in that direction. And I'm coming into stab in from there. But for me, I'll get more power if I stab it through. So if you see my arm, right? So again, the way I teach it in the gym is you get to have your arm this way first. And then from there, thrusting forwards, you're coming out, thrust forward, just so you've got that movement. Once you've kind of understood it, you're going to be in your stance and you're pushing it forward still. So my arm's coming up slightly and I'm stabbing in. So I'm coming through and I'm stabbing through. So Jamie's shelled up, that isn't going to stop any. That's going to come straight through very easily, which is why in Muay Thai, you don't see many people cover this way. But the elbow, it's why they want to keep it long. So for me, my arm just comes in. Thrusting forward, so the uppercut, coming this way, stabbing in, stab through. Yeah, so you pop this one, stab through, so it's going to the front of the face here. This one's more to cut, or to actually break the nose. Okay, so moving on to the final training section of today's live stream, and then we're going back to Damien. Damien, what's the final topic for you? Because um, we kind of spoke a little bit about like the switch kick, going like a, using a fake with a free, uh, switch kick. Right, so if I want to jam now, if Jamie blocks his leg, or he kind of does like a the double block this way, which you probably see a lot in kickboxing. So if I kick, he's double blocking. Okay, so I'm kicking, 
Okay, that's those back in, so it's kicking. Boom, so I use that now to throw like a left cross, and then from there, I can fire the kick in, right? When this comes in handy, is again, if you're checking with the leg, let's say for in Muay Thai, he blocks with the leg, a kick. Okay, he's blocked my kick. Again, same as what Jamie kind of explained earlier on. You carry on, kick him again. Okay, Jamie's obviously very good at blocking, so nine times out of 10, he's probably gonna block that kick. If I kick harder or faster, it's still gonna get defended, so after my shin's gonna get sore. So what I'm gonna do now is I switch, I'll block the kick, I'll fire the cross, so I've knocked him off balance, so I can score with that kick now. So I'm firing the punch, so I can land. Right now when you're doing it, it's not this, because there's nothing It's it's there's nothing in it. As I'm coming through, boom, I wanna punch, yeah, so it's heavy, so it becomes a left cross. So I switch, so I plant the floor, so I'm gonna hit through, so it's a heavy punch now. From there, I've knocked him off position, and then from there, I can land that kick straight through. And again, so I go switch, so punch through, and kick. Again, if you double blocks, like you see a lot in the um, kickboxing, if you just put your hands there. Yeah. So his hand seat is what I've opened him up here. So to get someone in from there, so I can switch, yeah, boom, boom, heavy shots again, and obviously then I can land with the kick. I might not even want to land with the kick from there. As I'm coming through, boom, yeah, you can kind of start coming in land with your knees, but the key things, as this leg moves back, plant, as you plant, you're driving off, because your power's from your leg, it's not your arm, and I'm firing like a heavy punch, straight through, okay, I'll show you from the opposite angle, so again, so I've got this piece, so I'm about to switch, so no, I don't start punching, so that hits the floor, I'm not kind of firing it through from there, come through, big punch, big kick, and good luck as well, after I've punched, I don't bring my arm all the way back because my weight shifts back so it's onto my hip. Because if I kick from here, I'm only kicking my legs so there's no power behind it. So I want to make sure, so I put my weights on back now, even I can lift both legs up if I need to. So again, it becomes a heavy kick. So you switch, plant, fire the cross, fire that kick. And as I was talking about earlier, when you kind of bounce, you get a little bit more power. Because I've knocked him off position, I can use that bounce then to fire in to get a little bit more power from there. And again, if I want to fire with the hook after, which is something I've done myself, there's a switch, so I fire that in, I use my hook now, and then after that, I'm following it through to the kick from there. Okay. okay guys, so we've come to the end of our, our live stream in terms of training, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's, it's been enjoyable. It's been, yeah. it's, I'd say it's been nice to see Damien and Jamie together because obviously I've known both of them for a long time and know how exceptionally both are. But what's been interesting for me is seeing how they, they interact with each other and start to... I don't know. Uh, they're probably working out how they could fight each other. <laughs> how could I deal with Damien? How could I deal with Jamie? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I don't, 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 don't believe that at all. Um, and, and, that's, and this is the thing. It's styles uh, and different disciplines. They're not necessarily one's better than the other it's an individual's ability to adapt isn't it and, and utilize it against someone else um now obviously if you've been following more collective for a while now you'll know um damien really well damien's put out loads of um fantastic uh videos on more collective and he's got five amazing volumes uh, that are available to download on the warrior marketplace you should go and check them out uh jamie's first volume has just gone up on the warrior marketplace recently uh, but in the past, again, we've done quite a few videos that are up on YouTube, which you should definitely go and check out. Um, and, of course, the app, which has just recently uh, come into play, uh, make sure you download it and you can live stream, but live stream, you can stream any of the volume straight to the app, um, which obviously makes things uh, walk around with uh, brilliant codes in your pocket. So we're going to finish it now, but just, just before we finish, though, um, is there anything you want to ask each other in terms of from karate to Muay Thai or Muay Thai to karate that you've kind of always wanted to to ask someone from the opposite uh, the opposite system, so to speak? Yeah. Um, what do you want to say? Get closer to completely. Uh, Apart from Thailand. I'd probably say Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah, they're really, really looked after us. Yeah. I've been there a couple of times. Um, and it's always been amazing. But the first time I went there, um, I was part of the uh, Hong Kong Championships. It was really strange because when we, we got there, um, they got another minibus from like, the airport and they took us to this restaurant to get weighed in. And like, we went upstairs and the restaurant was packed. 
And I've seen um, I've flew over from like a team from Thailand. So like, there was um, there's like me, there's a guy from Scotland, a guy from Ireland, a Japanese guy, a Spanish guy, and then one of the Thai trainers who was also competing. So I was really only kind of like non Chinese there. And we turned up and the whole place went silent. It was like one of them old kung fu movies. And so everyone just stopped just to stare at us. And some guy came out the back and just went, it's okay. And then like, some just kind of, everyone just carried on eating there. And it could, well, it was really strange. But just the way they looked after us was like, brilliant. Yeah. And then the second time I went, I fought on a uh, promotion. And for like, Muay Thai kickboxing, it's probably the best event I've been to. It wasn't just kind of fights stuck together. They kind of made like an event of it, if that makes sense. So rather than just people coming in, out, in, out, they'd like, they'd, like big theatrical music and flames and all sorts of things really good yeah. well um guys again thanks for watching uh, make sure you drop some comments and messages uh below let us know how you've enjoyed the live stream today uh, if you want to see more of them um if you want to see more of uh, obviously damien damien of course you do and if you have any ideas for topics or or even like what we've done today is bring two very different codes together just to bounce off each other and bring something new to the table hopefully um, but it's been amazing uh, to do this live stream. I hope you all enjoy it. Thanks to Dean and thanks Dean for sparing time. And like I said, go and make sure you follow them on social media if you're not already doing so. I'm sure you are. And make sure you check out their amazing volumes on the Warrior Marketplace.